Hi, Daddy. Hi. Happy Wednesday. Today, we are going to be reflecting on our 2020. This year is coming to a close. We're halfway through December. It's pretty wild. As we were sitting down to get ready to make this video, I was like, is it too soon to be talking about the end of 2020? Nope. 15 it, days away. Truly. It's here. No. I mean, yes, but also no. Like, on one side, goodbye 2020. I won't miss you. Don't call. Don't write. On the other hand, though, like, as we approach the milestone of New Year's Eve, it just sort of feels like, okay, yes, I officially lit this year on fire. And never <laughs> get it back. Yes. So we're going to be talking about some of our best of 2020 and some of our worst of 2020. Basically just taking you guys through the year that we have had. We don't really have any sort of agenda. You know, sometimes we draw questions out of a bowl or whatever. This, this is going to be more of just kind of a freehand conversation. But we figured since the deadline of New Year's Eve is fast approaching, we might as well make this video and... Say goodbye to this year. Yeah, it'll be like a little time capsule too, which I think is interesting. Ugh. To have us like reflect on 2020. Put it out there on the internet. A time capsule for what? Like, I don't know. Oh gosh, you know what I want to do? Relive the worst chapter of my life so far. I mean, where's that video? Let's, let's go look at 2020. I meant for other like, people. Look how pale and sad I look. When the history books are all on YouTube, and people are like, oh, I'm doing research on the year 2020. Maybe they'll find this video. Not the history books on YouTube. All right, everybody, thank you for coming to class. Please open your YouTube pages to chapter five. That was one of our better jokes. A quick programming note. How professional did I sound there? Very. Our next two, maybe even a couple videos are kind of going to be minimalistic, bare bones. We're not in the studio or anything like that because of COVID. So speaking of putting a nail in 2020, remember how COVID was happening this whole time? We're in Los Angeles. We're not supposed to leave home. So everything that we're going to be bringing you until further notice, we're going to be stuck in the house forever and ever, wasting away. What a way to end 2020. I think we should start off by telling our stories of where we first entered the year 2020. Like, where were you for New Year's Eve 2019 going into 2020? Yeah, I was in New York celebrating my sister's 30th birthday. Shout out, Allison. How was your 30th year? <laughs> uh, my sister's a New Year's baby, so uh, New Year's Eve is always kind of a fiasco because it's like, two, one, happy New Year birthday to <laughs> you. You know what I mean? There's a tiny shade of melancholy whenever I see my sister because it's always sort of like, when will I see you next? Mm. But I was gonna come home, you and me were gonna take a vacation, and then I was gonna return to New York 15 days later to start my Frozen contract. Because of course my expectation was go to New York, do my contract, move home, no viruses. Mm -hmm. Oh, how young I was to think oh. such things. So we were in great spirits because it was like, I'm going to be here for a couple days and then I'm going to come right back and I'm going to be here all year. It's weird because this was the first New Year's and I would like to believe that I had some sort of hidden intuition or something about what this year was going to be because I started off this new year in my pajamas on my parents' couch. This was the first new year that I was like, yeah... I don't really have any plans. Like people had invited me to things, but I was like, I don't really feel like dressing up or doing anything Why like be that. social? I have the whole year to go out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> that was really how I started my new year. Basically the way I spent this entire year, just in my pajamas on a couch. It's so crazy to go back and think of this year in totality. Here's a crazy yeah. one. What? Do you remember the day before COVID really hit? Because everyone was talking about COVID, but we were talking about it the way that we were talking about, you know, H1N1. Like, yeah. oh, this disease that's so far away. Hope the world's okay. Yeah. But then, like, all of a sudden, it was... I was going to say it was at the front door, but all of a sudden, we realized it was already in the house. <laughs> and, like, everything just... But two weeks before that, this was before anyone had really talked about COVID-19, even at our studio or that I'd even heard of. We had a big company-wide meeting led by HR 
talking about how each team would be prepared to work from home for long periods of time if something happened. But we were talking about like if there's an earthquake and the studio is damaged oh. or if there was a fire because we had just come out of, I think a couple months before that, like fire season in California. And there are- Right, well in like Australia. Remember yeah, when like- the fires in Australia. Australia, wildfire, that was like the Australian wildfires yeah. and the death of Kobe Bryant. We were like, nothing else is going to be this bad this year. So wild. Like starting off 2020 with the hard stuff. Yeah. And so we were already having this big meeting and like everybody was buying equipment to be like, okay, if we have to work from home. And I remember there even being some like, okay, well like, do we really need to be prepared for this? And sure enough, like two weeks later, this starts happening and we get the order that's like, all businesses basically shut down. So then that led us into like the early actual shutdown quarantine days. And for me with work, there were a couple of weeks where it was just kind of like, okay, I'm working from home, but like, what do we do? So a lot of my early quarantine days were just being in my apartment with my brother because you were still in New York. I just remember being like, what is this? Yeah. Like my family was coming up with a contingency plan if like things got apocalyptic. Yeah. I had a friend telling me like maybe this would be a good time to start a garden just in case we can't get food. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about like, and granted, COVID has been absolutely terrible. I'm not trivializing that at all. But at the beginning of this, we were talking about like riots and panics and, you know, grocery stores on fire. Food shortages. Yes. As a diabetic, seeing all the news about like, this is gonna disproportionately affect people with pre-existing conditions in a huge way being, and you know, New York is gonna be the epicenter yes. of this whole thing as Where it turned out to be in the spring. I, I was just, okay, is it smarter for me to just stay put? Do I get on a plane? If I do get on a plane and risk that, where am I going? Am I shacking up with my parents in Minnesota? Am I coming to LA? LA at the time didn't look any better. It, I mean, it was all those unknowns. Oh my God. And yeah. we'll, do, we'll do a recap with you guys about this. But like two days before I left New York, I got together with a few friends and we did one of those like write yourself a letter and send it to yourself in a year things. And it was like, I think, late March. So like in three months, we're gonna get that letter. And I just remember the letter was only questions. It was like, where are we gonna be? How long is this gonna last? How bad is this gonna be? How many people are we gonna know that are gonna get it? How many people are we, you know, it was just- How many people are gonna die? Yeah. Probably. But that's a good segue I feel into like sort of the expectations versus the reality of the situation on both sides. I mean, cause I think, Bailey. Bailey wanted to be with us. What do you remember about 2020? <laughs> How was your 2020? What do you remember about this morning? How far back do you go, you little goldfish? We had these like truly apocalyptic expectations. But then on the other hand, I, like I remember being like, okay, I'm sure by June or July we'll be going back. Yeah. Not only will Broadway be open, but like Frozen's not gonna close. Disney will keep us open forever. They have yeah. all the cash in the world. I think at the time we thought like a four to eight week hiatus. Yes, because I remember a part of the conversation of you flying back to LA was like, well, but what if you fly back to LA and then like in a week, Broadway opens back up again. So then you have to fly back. Like that was one of the thought processes for why not like maybe just stay in New York and just like live in a bubble and don't leave. Right, because I made that choice. Yeah. I was like, I'm staying in New York. And then a week went by and it was like, this is serious. I need like, to get out of here. Go. I think the crazy thing to reflect on too is just like how sure everybody was going into this year that it was gonna be like our year. Absolutely. Like a new decade. The twenties. The twenties. The roaring twenties. That everybody was just gonna like grind time, prime time. And like, I felt that way. Oh yeah. Like we, well, at the beginning of the year, created a list of 20 things we want to accomplish in 2020. And we were doing them. Yeah. Like that's the, th like I actually felt, and I mean, I was just talking to my friend Ellen who was in Frozen with me. Like we were talking about this with some of our friends recently. Like 
I actually think there was sort of a general consensus that we were all on that track. Yes, I think it was real. Yes, which made us getting derailed all the more depressing. Yeah. I didn't think this video would make me as sad. No. I thought well, it would just be like, yes, of course, a postmodern 2020 discussion. Uh, it, it's so far behind me now, I can just have a, a, an unbiased look at the history. <laughs> Sorry, am I keeping you up? No. So let's transition into some of the silver linings that we were able to find during our quarantine process, i.e. Animal Crossing. <laughs> the beginning of quarantine, when it was kind of, when everyone was kind of like, well, if we're gonna do it, let's do it. Like my mom and I just made pans upon pans of brownies, watching Tiger King. Yes, Tiger King. You know, at the beginning of it all, like there was something kind of sweet about it. Yeah. It was like, oh, this like free time with my parents. Like I'm gonna go back to Broadway, so it doesn't really matter. I don't have to spend any money. I can just chill with them and then go back to work when all of this is behind us in June. Yeah, it was this moment where everybody I think was like, okay, we're all gonna stay home. So like, how do we still be social? Thus the birth of Zoom. I just had this thought, like, what do you think the holiday party was like at Skype HQ? Oh, like, this is gonna be our year, you guys. We're still the dominating force in telecommunication. No one's gonna bring us down. Speaking of holidays, though, it has been interesting with, like, Zoom and everything to see how people have adapted. And just on, like, a global scale, how people have adapted to still finding the good in this year and finding ways to celebrate, like... I know that anytime I saw a video come across my Instagram Explorer page or Twitter or whatever, where it was some eight year old's birthday and so they had the neighborhood do like a drive through like happy birthday and everybody would be holding up signs for this kid or like a fireman crew would come through and like with their big truck and wish them a happy birthday. You know, just like, it, it, was, it was very heartwarming to see the ways that people still found ways to connect. In a way, this has been so polarizing in almost every fashion. Yeah. We have seen the best of us, and we've seen the worst of worst. us. Politically, socially, mm -hmm. we've seen people deny the existence of this. We've seen the political system in America become basically Nazi Germany light. We've seen the best of us activating. I mean, when you think about George Floyd and the mm. gasoline that that poured on the Black Lives Matter fire and the way that that is just like raging to a, a place that is so successful, so inspiring, so loud, so vibrant. Protesting and the protesters that did not contribute to a spike in COVID. Yes, like, exactly. Because they wore their masks. They Like the fact that Thanksgiving no matter where you come from, no matter what your political philosophy is, Thanksgiving was a more dangerous American event than any Program. of the Black Lives Matter protests. <laughs> and the other thing that just sort of, I think, highlights and accentuates all that is that we have nothing else to do but to watch. Yes. Oh you my know? gosh. That kind of brings everything to the surface as well. I mean, I just think about like my obsession with the news, yeah. A, because there's so much going on in the world, but B, because there's so little going on in my world. Yes. Again, another sort of very polar opposite dichotomy there. Mm. It feels very dangerous to set any sort of expectations mm. for the next year. I'm an optimist, but again, I think this year has only proved that you never know what's gonna happen. So I don't know what my mindset is going into this next year. I know that it's solely fueled by gratitude because this year has just made me so grateful for all the things and experiences that I do have. You said that on Thanksgiving and it was mm -hmm. such a good point that like the little things really hit different now. Yeah. Food on the table, a roof over our heads, mm -hmm. like even the smallest amount of savings in the bank. Yeah. Like the little things really hit different. My worldview in general is expect the best, prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. Like I'm expecting the vaccine to make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting with new leadership in this country, people will be incentivized to take steps to protect themselves and others. I'm expecting for theaters to open up and for gatherings to be allowed and for the sun to shine a little bit brighter. But I am prepared for that not to happen until closer to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm prepared for the fact that the vaccine rollout is not going to be seamless in the same way that like trying to find N95s or ventilators at the beginning of this year was not seamless. I'm prepared for the fact that things are going to take longer than we want. I'm prepared for the COVID idiots to be marching on the streets saying that a mask isn't a tool, it's a muzzle, and all of the crazy conspiracy theories that America has just become obsessed with. Like I'm prepared for that. And I think as it's always been, progress is going to be a tug of war between the people who want to go forward and the people who are digging their heels in. And 2021, I think it's just going to be about pulling harder. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it. And also just to use the phrase that you already used, expect the best, prepare for the worst. I, I think I think that's really the motto going into 2021. Because we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, the motto for 2020 was unprepared for the worst yes on (laughs) all levels and 2021 we will be expecting the best and at least this time we'll be prepared for the worst on the off chance that it continues longer than we want it to yeah do you have any predictions for things that are going to happen in 2021 i honestly don't know that i do i think the vaccine rollout process is going to take a while because also as we've kind of alluded to there are a lot of conspiracy theorists in this country and people who just don't trust The government or like the new government that's coming in. So half of the people are going to take it, half of them aren't. That's going to take a while to adjust to and adapt to and see how that affects things in our country. So I agree. Like, I don't think I can realistically see things opening and like gathering until like the end of next year. But I... It's so tough to know. Yeah, it's really hard, but... Hopefully I'm pleasantly surprised. Who knows? This is a really dark thing to say, but like, I'm anticipating a lot of civil unrest, especially in the time of the inauguration yeah. and and with sort of the anti-vaxxer movement versus the scientific progression of it all. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also anticipating 2020 election-esque celebrations in the streets. The biggest party America has ever seen when we're all allowed to go outside maskless to see each other we're vaccine we're inoculated we're immunized i mean can you like can you imagine I, the first party we throw here the first movie theater we step back into oh like, it makes me want to cry and i think <laughs> i think 2021 is going to be filled with those yeah with that return to the feeling of humanity that at this point feels all but lost forever yeah i truly get so emotional just thinking about this because it was such a large part of my 2019 like landing in new york again and mm. like just Ugh. Like seeing my first Broadway show of 2021. Yeah, like I just I just cannot wait for that. And yeah, just going to a movie theater like, oh, oh man. I hope it I hope it happens next year. But until then, still keep watching at- our YouTube oh. channel. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say keep looking for those silver linings. It's us. One of them being us, we maybe. The <laughs> hey, I don't know if this would have happened without COVID. That's a really good point. Probably not. That's another big silver lining. This was a project we wanted to do because we had all this time together. So, hey, thanks 2020 for the Sam and Ryan YouTube channel. Oh. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you maybe enjoyed this video. <laughs> Did I enjoy this video? I, I can't tell. I'm sort of unsettled. Yeah. Like 2020. Like 2020 has been. 2020. I'm really interested to see how your 2020 was and any reflections that you've had about this year. As always, be sure to smash like and subscribe. subscribe button, smash like and subscribe button, YouTube, YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> and we will see you guys on Friday. Say bye, Daddy Bailey. Useless. We love you. We love you. From our house to yours. Bye, Daddy. Bye.